A Funkel is a fun uncle who loves to dance, while a Bunkle is a bad uncle who may be framing his half-brother for murder. Therefore, a Fex boyfriend is a steampunk buddy, but a Bex boyfriend listens to conversations that they shouldn't, and he can't read between the lines. A Fadopted sister does magic tricks, while a budopted sister gets jealous of her brother's bride-to-be. Is the killer the buncle, or the Bex boyfriend, or the budopted sister? Edgar was the victim, but was he the victim who loved his bride? Or was he the victim who ran Ponzi schemes and cruelly cut baseball cards? How did Edgar, who could read social cues like knowing Anique would propose to Zoe, and knowing Sebastian's accent was fake, and knowing that Ulysses had an affair. How did that Edgar not know about Grace and Hannah? And what would they do if he did know? Let's solve the after party. Season two, episode seven, Ulysses. We'll be breaking down each episode for clues, suspects, and red herrings on the hunt to learn who killed Roxana the lizard and Edgar the groom. Spoiler for the first season and all seven episodes of season two of the after party. If you haven't seen all 10 episodes, pause this video, do it in the sand, like the seagulls, and then come back after you've watched. Use the timestamps below to jump to the topic or suspect you want to hear and skip past the stuff you don't want to hear. You may have noticed we are currently also doing a Let's Solve podcast on only murders in the building. Whew, this is a lot. Please, the show just started season three. You can jump in without having seen the first two seasons. It's a lot of fun. Not as many clues as the after party, but still a lot of fun. And heck, they may have given us a great clue in the first three minutes. Ah, you'll love it. If you're interested in murder mysteries that have some good humor, be sure to join us on Let's Solve Only Murders in the Building. In addition to Only Murders in the Building, next week, Ahsoka starts up. And we are going to be covering Ahsoka as an after show podcast, which is a lot of fun. That may mean that the after party video may come out a day later than usual. We're going to try to get it out on time. But no, for these last three weeks, we're going to be covering only murders in the building, the after party and Ahsoka and possibly Wheel of Time season two. We're just getting jammed up here at my editing house. As we love to say, we want you to subscribe on YouTube, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere you can subscribe. But also, hey, join us on social media and talk to us after these shows at Double PHQ on Twitter, Instagram, and threads, facebook.com slash Double PHQ. We love to talk to you. Let's begin by looking at this week's bonus clue. Do you know the phonetic alphabet? That's Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, etc. Because you need it to solve this week's bonus clue. If you listen to the episode, the first word of the phonetic alphabet you hear in this episode is November. Then you hear Oscar. Then you hear Tango. N-O-T. Listen to this episode. It's fun if you want to play along. And it's going to spell out the clue, not the DJ. The DJ did not kill Edgar. Before we run down the suspects, let's see what episode 7 taught us about the victim, Edgar, and his pet, Roxana. We'll be discussing Roxana during the wedding ceremony in more detail later. But where was Roxana during the wedding? She was not on Edgar's shoulder. Why do you think Edgar went through all the trouble to find Ulysses? Why care about Grace knowing her real father? Unless, as I've suspected, Edgar had issues with his parentage as well. Ulysses told Edgar about his affair with Vivian. Edgar is the one who suspects that Ulysses might be Grace's father. We didn't see anything especially new during the after party in Ulysses' visions about Edgar. We see him just talking to his mother, Isabel. Now let's start off with the field, because Kyler, look at his handle on his Instagram. Is Kyler the skater that we were told in one of the bonus clues was not Edgar and Roxana's killer? Fang, the father of the bride. When we first see Fang in this episode, he's talking to his wife Vivian about scoliosis and the liver. With his wife, he doesn't want to talk about the investigation or to any investigators like Danner. We find out Fang is only a half-brother to Ulysses. Despite having money trouble, Fang did buy his wife a very nice necklace for their anniversary. 
Now Fang is naturally furious when he finds out about his half-brother cheating with his wife, and he threatens to kill Ulysses if he ever comes back. Of course, this is Ulysses telling us this version. Similarly, from Ulysses' biased perspective, Fang claimed to take care of Edgar. As we mentioned in other videos, Fang isn't at the reception during the first dance or the speeches. He appears at the after party with some special shaved ice just for Edgar. Or is this Ulysses trying to frame his brother? Hannah Cornelia Minnows, the groom's sister. The most fun thing on Reddit this week came from a user with the handle Truman Burbank, who noted that during the wedding ceremony when the vow box is on Grace and Edgar's shoulder, Roxana couldn't be on their shoulder without being crushed. And so if you look in Grace's telling, you can see Roxana in Hannah's hands. It's real blurry, out of focus, but in this shot right here, you can see that green lizard in Hannah's hands. Does this mean Hannah's innocent? She certainly didn't kill Roxana at this moment. Or does it prove that Hannah's guilty? What do you think? Hannah is relaxing by the pool, and is she doing leather work? So many clues point to Hannah, but she does have a good point about, hey, look at all the footage that Kyler filmed. Isabel, the mother of the groom. The main thing Isabel says in this episode is she doesn't want any food. She says no food. Why not? Would that hurt her Adderall addiction? Travis is listening in on these investigations. Is it to find the killer or to make sure nobody's pointing a finger at him? Uncle Ulysses, in my opinion, the bunkle. Ulysses claims his story is a tale of love, tragedy, betrayal, and redemption. When he goes in to talk to Danner, Anik cuts him off even though he was going to immediately talk about the glass at the after party. Terrible move, Anik. Ulysses says he was part of the USO during the first Gulf War, and one of his fellow dancers lost a foot in an attack. Returning from service, he learned to release the pain through dance. He has a very inappropriate relationship with his brother's wife, but she dumps him before nationals. Despite being dumped, he lived very close to her for six years, hanging out with her kids. But when he finally confesses again, his brother finds out. Ulysses travels the world, accompanied by the song Africa, which we've heard in other episodes this year. Now, Edgar finds him in Patagonia. Why? Ulysses points multiple fingers at Fang throughout this telling. And while I don't really trust any of them, he also doesn't get basic facts right. Edgar kicked everyone out of the reception tent at 9.50, not 10 p.m. Does this mean Ulysses doesn't care about details, or is he lying for a reason? A popular theory online is that Ulysses is trying to bump off his half-brother and gives him a glass that's drugged. Somehow that glass ends up in Edgar's mouth, and Edgar dies. Would you guys be happy with an accidental murder of Edgar and Roxana? Vivian, the mother of the bride. Vivian claims she doesn't want to talk to investigators because she feels like she's being accused just because she saved some flowers. We learned Vivian was a competitive ballroom dancer in college, and she's a very strict teacher. We mentioned that she dumped Ulysses, but she still did have feelings for him. Danner suspects that the mystery of Grace's parentage is the secret that Edgar was pressuring her about the night of the rehearsal dinner. I'm not so sure. Now, Vivian claims she did a paternity test and Ulysses is not the father. There's no way for us to know. Do you think Ulysses is Grace's father? Please let me know. Go down on the YouTube comments, tweet at us, Instagram at us, threads at us, go to our Facebook page. We want to know. Is Grace the child of Vivian and Ulysses? Now let's get to your feedback. First up, a great member of the Clue crew, it's Luca, who says, I'm sticking to my first theory that Isabel murdered her son. Perhaps Isabel tried to poison Grace, but Edgar drank the drink instead? Ah, but then Grace would have mentioned it in her story. Ugh! Okay, I believe I know who did it. It was Isabel, but have no idea how she did it. I feel like I'm on the game show, Who Done It? And I'm waiting for John Pertwee to say, Will the real whodunit stand up, please? A user with the handle BatsMarutube wrote, Isabel's motive to kill Edgar is that Edgar had been drugging her in an attempt to put her in a conservatory ship. That's why she's adamant that she remembers things. Somebody agrees. Mang says, I think it is Isabel now. AG wrote, I'm curious to know what Isabel meant by I remember everything 
when Sebastian escorted her down the aisle. Now, someone who's not focused on Isabel is Blacklisted65, who wrote, I almost think Isabel is this season's Chelsea. Like, maybe she had some beef with her son, but she didn't want him dead. Lonely One wrote, Now I'm suspecting some others I'd never considered before, like Travis. Was he faking the whole poison tea demonstration where he microdosed? We never see Travis actually ingesting anything. It could be an elaborate way to get people to think the devil's trumpet was the actual method when he used other means. There are a lot of hints that it could have been related to the pool. Note the danger no swim sign is an anagram for Edgar Minnows. Or perhaps the Adderall. Was it really Adderall? Or maybe even the Bao Bing or white chocolate. The show certainly wants us to think that the teapot contains the poison, since Edgar died 35 minutes after retiring to his room. That means he would have had to drink the tea while he was in there, even though apparently he fell asleep as soon as he entered. Why were Edgar's eyes open when they found him in the morning? Was somebody else trying to use his phone? This show is making me crazy. Lonely One just talked about the white chocolate. Let's look at Satori, who gave this feedback. Why so long was spent on the white chocolate? First, notice the dice next to the box of chocolate chips. They are snake eyes. That has been a theme. Hannah told Travis, it's snake eyes for us both, Chucky, after she didn't give him the signal to object to the wedding. The painting in Edgar's office is either dice or dominoes. Two different pots in his office on shelves each have two distinct holes next to each other with lights emanating from them like it's snake eyes. Second, we learned it's the only food that they both didn't like. So when Anik says they shared food and drink all night, they both died, it couldn't have been white chocolate. Finally, Anik called white chocolate an imposter chocolate, and Edgar called it the Bernie Madoff of desserts, and Edgar was running a Ponzi scheme. Satori ends by saying that shot you show of Hannah towards the end doing a little sign language, Jasper was doing sign language too. I wonder what they were signing. Dominic wrote, when someone claims to be something happily, then they're actually not. Not to mention that if Travis had the tea, then how long did he have it boiling? A great handle, Mean Bob wrote, it was Hannah. She has the most in common with Dr. Devereaux's methodology. The way she's seemingly covering for Grace is the, it would be too obvious if I initially said he was guilty ploy. Temmy is kind of with Mean Bob because Temmy believes it's either Travis or Hannah. Quincy wrote, Zoe hiding the tea kettle in the bathroom cupboard was done deliberately to throw off us, the audience. It looked like she was about to try some of the tea herself. Seven episodes down, we got three episodes left to solve the after party. Next week, it's episode eight, Fang. Talk to you next week, detectives.